Find your seats, please. Let's talk about homework. Let's talk about homework. We are recording. So. Lights, please, somebody. So let's take a look. Let's look at uh, a couple of these problems. Uh, I'll, I'll collect it here eventually. I think we'll collect. So yesterday we had 29 and 30, right? That we, I did not collect them, correct? Correct. And today is page 31, 32. So I think I'll be able to collect both of those today. Now, we talked about yesterday the back side, 5 through 14. We had done a couple of them, right? We talked about... So what were some things about linear functions? How do you know when you're looking at a linear function when you're looking at a table? What takes place? Johnny? Um, so a linear is, um, a linear has like the same difference. Same what? Like the same difference. Same difference on which value? Um, the, the y. Yeah, y value, you have the same difference or the same sum. So if you're adding 2 each time, or you're adding 19 each time, or you're subtracting 4 each time, even if you're subtracting or adding a fraction each time. So linear is pretty easy to identify. And then exponential, if you try and figure out how much you're adding or subtracting, it's not the same. Okay? And that doesn't mean that everything is linear versus exponential. It's just you know starting out how to look at it. So Let's take. Let's go to the front page and take a look at a few of those. Um, one, two, three, or four. Uh, looks like problem one and problem four. three are exponential. Two and four are linear. So what do you want to see? What was it? I heard. One. Which one? One. Three. Okay. Three. Take a look at one. Uno and, and uno one and three. Okay. So you should have it out. Take a look at them. Uh, let's see. Tools. No math. Graph. So we have problem number one. We had g at x. Well, g at x is equal to one half four raised to the x minus six. So what five numbers are we always kind of starting with? Negative, negative two, negative, negative two, zero. negative one, zero, one, zero, one, and two. Okay, so those are our x values. Then our y values. So sometimes they will plot easily. Sometimes they won't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, negative six. So because of, you're absolutely right. Because of this right here, that means down here, this is that asymptote. Okay? That becomes the line where it doesn't cross. Okay? So good call on that one. So let's let's plug in our values, see what happens. So if I plug negative two in, four to the negative two is one over four to the second. And one over four to the second is one fourth times one fourth, which is one sixteenth. And half of 1 16th is 1 32nd. So then I have 1 32nd minus 6. So that becomes negative 5, 31 over 32. That's really close to negative 6. Do you agree? So at negative 2, we are really ultra close to that. Okay? Then if I plug negative one fourth to the negative one is four over one over four to the first, which is one fourth. One fourth times one half is one eighth, and a one eighth minus six becomes negative five and seven eighths. Is that pretty close to negative six as well? It sure is. Okay, so it's just a little bit above it, like that. And let's plug zero in. 4 to the 0 is how much? 1. 1 times half is half. So I get half minus 6, which is negative 5 and 1 half. Is that still pretty close to negative 6? Yep. It's just coming up just a little bit each time. Okay. And it's kind of hard to show. I mean, I have a much bigger grid than what you would be working out on your, your table, and it's still pretty hard to show those fractional amounts. Plug 1 in. 4 to the first is 4. Half of 4 is 2, so I get 2 minus 6, which is negative 4. Oh, finally, you got some numbers that we can work with. So uh, 1, negative 4. 
And then plug 2 and 4 to the second power is 16. What's half of 16? 8. So I get 8 minus 6, which gives me 2. So 2 times 2. That should look pretty obvious that it's not a linear function. Agreed? And then we'll just play a little connected dots and see how we do. Something rolling along here. So if you're able to generate that type of thing, there's two of the problems on the quiz that are looking for you to do that. Exactly. Yeah. So I said you want the range. The range. Where would, if I was on an elevator and I was riding from negative infinity up, when do I start seeing the graph? Just about, just a smidge above negative six. So the range would go from negative six, parenthesis, parenthesis negative six to infinity. Does that make sense? So you're on an elevator going up and down. So when you get to six, if you were to look out, you wouldn't see it. As soon as you get just a little tiny bit above six, negative six, you're gonna you'd be able to look out the window this way and see you know, if you were to take that analogy. All right. You also want to see number three? No. Yeah. Okay. File number three. Graph. Nah. I always do that. Sheesh. One of these days I'll learn how to use this board real well. And then I'll retire. <laughs> no, real good at the board. Hey, what's R at X the same as? The same as Y. It's just a different. 2 times 2 raised to the X plus 1. So values that I'm going to use are negative 2 to positive 2. So my x values, my y values, uh, so negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So talking through it, 2 raised to the negative 2 is going to become 1 over 2 quantity squared. So what's half times half? Half times half. 1 fourth. 1 fourth times negative 2 is negative half. So I get negative half plus 1, which is just half, isn't it? So negative 2 comma half. Huh? You have to like pop in the negative and then you have to like pop in the negative. Did I say it right? Yeah. So the, so the math that would have taken place right here would have been negative 2 times 1 fourth plus 1. So that would have given you negative half. Right, because negative two times one, and then you reduce it plus one. Okay, so negative two comma half. There. Is that all right? All right, let's plug negative one and see what happens. If I plug negative one in right here, I get two to the negative one, which is the same as what? Two to the negative one is the same as what? Right, one half. So one half times negative two is negative one. Negative one plus one is equal to zero. So negative one zero. Hey, where's this cross the y-axis? Oh, I did. Oh boy, thank you. Negative one comma one. You are so right. I'm so sorry. We don't know where it cross the y-axis yet. All right, let's plug zero in. Two raised to the zero power is. Wait, hold on, no, no, no. Negative one and zero. Negative oh. one goes to zero. Well, I tell you, I, well, I tell you, I fall off that ladder earlier. It's a little further than I thought. There we go. There, are we right now? Shoot. I, I'm, getting, I'm doing it correct on this side, and I'm transferring to a graph totally wrong. All right. Are, are we good so far now? Oh, hey, one question. What does the asymptote appear to be? Uh, one. One. Right. So right here is our asymptote because of that plus one, right? All right, let's keep going on this. Uh, zero. So two to the zero power is one. Negative two times one is negative two. Negative two plus one is negative one. So zero, negative one. Now I know where it crosses the y-axis. Zero comma negative one, right? All right, let's plug one in. Two to the first. Two, right? 
Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 plus 1. So I get to negative 3. So 1 comma negative 3. Well, we'll figure. I think it's decay, because as you go from left to right, as you go right, it becomes a smaller and smaller and smaller value, and it goes more negative. All right, and then last one we got is uh, let's see, two. So the second is two to the second is four. Negative two times four is. Negative 8 plus 1, so this is not negative 7, so 2 negative 7, that's down here. Is that right? So this is definitely decay. It's not growing. It's as I go, I, as I come from the left in the x direction, and I go to the right in the x direction, the y goes more and more and more negative. The y determines whether it's if it's growing, getting bigger or smaller. Call it, you could call it the output if you wanted to. Four, yeah. Uh, what kind of number four? What kind of problem is number four? It's linear. So, oops, that's is it t at x? What is t at x the same as? Y. Okay. Yeah, negative four over three x plus ten. Is that right? Okay, this is linear. What sticks out here to tell me it's a linear equation? It's y, y, who y? y equals mx plus b. Even though there's a fraction sitting out front, right? Um, even though I have a fraction out in front of the x, that doesn't change that it's linear or not. That's just our slope. So if I drew my this in place, this gives me the point 10, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, put a dot, okay? And from that dot, I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, and over how many? 2, 3. I only need two points to determine a straight line. What do you know about the slope of a straight line? A what? Is it, so what is the slope of this line no matter what two points I pick? Yeah, my slope, my rate of change on this line, my rate of change on this line is going to be negative 4 over 3. It is the slope. Okay, but the rate of change is different when it's talking about exponential. Should we go back and look at rate of change on one of those graphs before? Can I do that? Cool. All right, so what I'd like to do is I'm going to, let me erase, I don't need this part here. And we'll move that. Okay, let's see if I can do this. Will let me do that. What are you guys having for lunch today? <laughs> right. So, these are all ordered pairs. Agree? Yes. Okay, so item one on this. Can we all agree that between two sets of points and two other sets of points, the rate of change is going to be different each time? Does that make sense if I said that? So what? So you might come across something saying, hey, what is the rate of change from negative 2 to negative 1? So what two points am I going to use for this problem? 
I going to use the first two points, the second two points, the third two points, the fourth two points, the first and the third? First two. Okay. So I'm going to just circle this so we know that these are the two that I'm going to use for the rate of change. So remember, rate of change means slope, y2, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And here, a lot of people go, oh, you get hung up on it. They're like, well, how do I know which one's x1, y1, which one's x2, y2? It doesn't matter. Don't mix x1 and y2 together, but just come over here and label it. Okay, I know this is x1. I'm going to call that x1 and y1. I'm going to call this x2 and y2. Could I add that x2, y2, x1, y1? Yes, it's going to work out the same. So let's figure out what the rate of change is. So I have one half. Uh, let's see, I have y2. So it's 0 minus half, right? And yeah, we have a fraction. Deal with it. It's, it's not going to hurt you. Okay? And then I have what? What's on bottom? Negative 1 minus Minus 2. What's negative, negative? Positive. So on top, I'm going to get negative half over 1. What's negative half over 1? What's negative half over 1? Just negative half. So what's the rate of change between negative 2 and negative 1? Negative half, yeah. Down 1, right 2. Okay. But let's say, let's say we changed it up. Let's say we said, well, if we know that, that's fine and dandy. But what's the rate of change from negative 1 to 2? So which two points am I using there? Yeah, I'm going to use, I'm going to use this one and this one. Why am I using those two and not two right next to each other? Right. They want to look at this negative one. That's the same as that negative one. What is this two? Here. Okay. Now, if this was a straight line, that rate of change would be the same regardless of what two points I pick, no matter how far apart. But here, it's going to be a little different. So let me scroll down a smidge. Okay. So again, we're using the slope equation. Hey, we already have this label x2, y2. So can I label this x1, y1? Does that seem okay? So let's find the slope. So y2, we have labeled as 0. y1, I have labeled as what? So minus negative 7. <coughs> Excuse me. All right? x2 is? Oh, it's saying, well, why am I? What? Negative 1. And what is my x1? So minus a 2. So what does the top give me? Seven. Positive 7. What does the bottom give me? Seven. Negative 3. Could I write it like this? Yeah, that means the same thing. Does it appear the rate of change is different on each? Yes. And it should be. The rate of change does not stay constant between two points on, or these two points is different than these two points is different than these two points when it's exponential. If it's linear, it's going to stay the same. The rate of change means the same thing as slope every time. Sound okay? Feeling good? This quiz is pretty quick. Uh, someone put lights on. This is what I'd like also. Let's go back here. Let's go back to, I want... Both of these, make sure your name's on it, have this one on top. Staple them together and bring them on forward, please.